31st July 1796 on Noirmoutier Island, France, Rose Virginie Pelletier was the eighth child of a devout Catholic doctor who cared for the poor. Her family welcomed into their home those in need of special care, and it was by her parents' example of compassion that Rose Virginie learned to love others as her brothers and sisters. Growing up, she was happiest playing in the woods and by the sea, and even at that young age, Rose Virginie showed that she was strong-willed and mischievous. In her adventures, she sometimes wandered into the cave of St. Philbert, famed as a retreat for the saint after whom it was named. There, despite the mischief of her youth, she found an odd serenity, as if in awe in the presence of a saint. When Rose Virginie was 12, she enrolled for the first time at a regular school established by the Ursuline sisters. Her carefree days roaming the island were curtailed upon her enrollment and ended abruptly when her family resettled in the mainland. Rose Virginie was inconsolable, and even more so when she was later sent away to boarding school in Tours. When a door closes, the Lord opens a window. Rose Virginie learned the value of acceptance, empathy and kindness in finding hope and dispelling her troubles from a young teacher who took kindly upon her despite her unhappiness. It was to be a profound experience for Rose Virginie, for in her youth she would lose a brother, a sister, and both her parents. In her grief, she found strength and was drawn to the congregation of Our Lady of Charity of the Refuge. It was a congregation founded by St. John Eudes and named for the sisters who dedicated their lives to giving shelter and healing spiritually and emotionally wounded women marginalized by society. Their convent was called the Refuge. At age 18, Rose Virginie responded to the call and joined the congregation. She received her religious name, Mary Euphrasia. In Greek, Euphrasia means beautiful speech, so reflective of the numerous letters and conferences that she has written. On the day she made her vows, she solemnly promised to devote herself to that same cause for which Christ died. The demand for the services by the sisters grew and became acute due to widespread poverty and misery faced by the people after the French Revolution. Women and children were left to fend for themselves as the men had to leave home to join the army and navy and many never returned. An urgent appeal came from the city of Angers and Mary Euphrasia recognized the need for more houses of refuge to be established. Mary Euphrasia had the gift of attracting like-minded people with a passion for justice into religious life and as lay collaborators. With the support of the bishop, the house of refuge named Bon Pasteur or Good Shepherd in Angers was started in a former factory. The house was funded by two trusted companions, Countess Genevieve Dondina and Count Augustine de Neuville. Countess Dondina was a wealthy landowner who later became her financial backer in her extensive travels. Count Augustin de Neuville had a deep concern for the sisters' work and used his social influence to advance the mission. Mary Euphrasia also established the Contemplative Sisters of the Good Shepherd, known as Magdalens. It was for those who wished to live a cloistered life. They supported the work of the congregation by their work and prayers. Mary Euphrasia was appointed superior at Angers at the age of 29, where she worked hard 
organizing and connecting with helpers and benefactors. At one stage, Mary Euphrasia found herself badly in need of a professed sister for an important office, but none was available despite urgent appeals to Tor and Nantes. She believed then that a central administration, which united all the houses, was the answer, and Count de Neuville strongly supported her in this. In January 1835, the Pope granted the petition for all the houses of the Good Shepherd to come under a central administration known as the Generalate. The congregation was henceforth known as Our Lady of Charity of the Good Shepherd of Angers. Houses which did not attach themselves to the Generalate continued to be known as Houses of Refuge. The Good Shepherd Sisters had an urgent need for a new place to house female juvenile offenders as an alternative to the prisons. St. Nicholas Abbey was then up for sale, but Mary Euphrasia did not have the money to buy it. The owner said to her, Mother, do not worry. You pay with whatever money you have and pay the rest as and when you can. Your God will help you. Mary Euphrasia was delighted. At that time, the sisters could not step out of the convent without the written permission of the bishop. Hence, they could not freely go to St. Nicholas. This was impractical, and so the very creative and non-conformist Mary Euphrasia built a tunnel access to St. Nicholas from within the mother house. The tunnel was completed in a record three months with the eager help of the sisters and the residents. Her zeal and daring audacity would stop at nothing. Similarly, neither objections nor lack of money could stop her. She knew this was holy work, God's work, and if it was God's work, God would provide. Mary Euphrasia's zeal to spread the Good Shepherd mission to every corner of the earth was reflected by the constant encouragement she gave to the sisters. We must not fear to go and pitch our tents on the most distant shores. She loved much and was ever ready to respond to the needs of the times. Mary Euphrasia's ability to trust and to be open to new ideas contributed to building successful partnerships and collaboration to further the cause of Good Shepherd Mission. As an example, Mary Euphrasia worked with the government, which also provided funding to accept and house young girls who would otherwise have been condemned to prison because of stealing. This was to protect them from shame and dishonor. Recognizing the dignity of labor, the sisters taught the women skills and involved them in livelihood projects. These projects gave them opportunities to earn a living and be self-sustaining. Mary Euphrasia's years of intense hard work had taken their toll on the foundress's health and strength. She was almost 72 years old when she returned to the Lord on 24th April, 1868. Goodbye, my daughters. Goodbye, dear Institute, were her last words. At the time of her death, there were 110 Good Shepherd houses in 35 countries on five continents. A year after her death, the Sri Lanka mission was founded. From Sri Lanka, the Good Shepherd Sisters came to Singapore in 1939 and reached Malaysia in 1956. She was canonized on 2nd May 1940. Today, as we face many challenges, including people who are trafficked, women and children who are marginalized by society and other injustices, what do you think Mary Euphrasia has to say to us?